LumaFusion is an incredible application. It's a video editing tool. You can have six camera angles and you can either chop and change between them. You can resize them. You can do all sorts of things. You can colorize them, posterize them, do anything. And for under 30 pounds, when it deals with 60 frame HD video, that's really pretty impressive. However, of course, it has some audio processing on it. And some put some capabilities but they're not going to be anything to write home about however if you're on an ipad that means that you'll have GarageBand for ios and you can do a lot more with that and integrate it with LumaFusion. and i'll show you how to do that here we are then with my ipad there's four of me on the screen i've sort of sang a little fairly bad jingle about this uh, and I've taken the unusual step of actually using another device to video this screen because actually the screen grab of this isn't going to work when I'm trying to edit video as well that's just too much so what I've done is I've got four tracks here um, or four video tracks and then some words there so I've done some subtitles are you ready for this mixing audio in Fusion can be done using only the app. That is true to an extent. However, and I've haven't used anything but LumaFusion to do the audio here. I've simply used the audio file that came with the video. That is, when you shoot with the iPad, it obviously records the video and the audio and then you can process them separately within LumaFusion. Now, if I just maybe just uh, listen to, uh, I don't know, let's have a listen to the second part up on its own. So I'm just going to go in and have a listen to that by pressing the pencil tool at the bottom of the page. Mixing audio in LumaFusion. Yeah, OK. The less of this heard, the better. However, you can see that I've got my audio file here and I have the ability to automate volume. Now, that same ability exists in GarageBand. But when you look at the right hand side of the page on LumaFusion, you do have some basic tools to help you. Things like a bandpass filter. That means that it will only pass a certain, for example, the mid range only and cut the bass and the treble. And you can shift that about. Now, of course, these have limited use. I could put it through a, an echo, for example. Let's have a look. Mixing audio. Mixing audio. Yeah, okay. That's kind of limited use, and it's all sliders. It's not sort of pretty pictures and things, which might make things easier for you. I'll just get rid of that, and I've also, for some reason, got a high pass filter on there. It's not doing anything. High pass filter is useful if you use a really large microphone, large diaphragm mic that picks up a lot of subsonic frequencies that being frequencies below about 40 hertz which you don't really want nothing it really goes that low apart from kick drum and bass guitar so certainly not vocals i'll just get rid of that now at the moment because each of these videos has been shot with an ipad it's just mono audio that's it there are some Apple devices that permit stereo recording. There's a site that you can see things like the, the iPhone 11, 11 Pro, XS, XR, those sort of things will allow stereo recording. But that brings forth its own set of problems with regard to phasing. For example, if you are maybe doing something like this, four voices or two flutes and a piano or something like that. So mono may be your best bet. Now, if I just look at this, I'm just going to go back into the, the main page now. I'm going to bring GarageBand up for iOS into the equation here. Now, I'm going to, using a set of workarounds, I'm actually going to export this as audio only. So if I just go to that, the right hand side there, audio only, uh, I'm going to go save it in files. Um, Apple, there we go, so Apple sort of compressed format there's no need really to up the the, the um, resolution if the resolution of the original wasn't there you can do that though you can set it as a wave audio file if you want and in fact i'm going to do that just because it's a bit of a habit so i'm just going to export that luma fusion audio uh vocal one so it gives you the option to name it at the time as well that's pretty good 
So it's not just my song 10 or whatever. Garage Band file transfer, I'm going to save it in there. Luma Fusion Audio Vocal 1. So I'm going to do exactly the same by unmuting the the second audio track up but muting the rest so i'm going to just do that this may seem laborious but actually it makes a lot of sense because when you are mixing in garage band with a nice reverb you know you can you can really get a good mix not only that you can do some mastering with something called final touch which is another app you have to pay for but you know with that final touch is only about eight pounds it's cheaper than when i bought it Ooh, it's always the way and if you want to really record with a higher quality mic things like the zoom iq6 which is 77 pounds does give you a bit better quality well much better quality so for the sake of about 110 pounds in addition to the iPad, you have yourself quite an armory of tools. So I'm just going to um, export the other uh, audio here. So that's the second one down. So WAV file, you get really quick at this after a while. Vocal three, um, uh, export that. And because it's very short, it doesn't really take any time to do it. So mute that, unmute the top one and do the same thing again. Audio only, files going to keep it as a WAV or rather turn it into a WAV and then uh, vocal four. There we go. Now I've got these things in here. That's that done. I'm going to go into GarageBand, uh, open new song when it's finally finishes loading. There we go. So I'm just going to go uh, new song, find a vocal track, there we go, a voice recorder. Go to my main page. You have to select a vocal track in order that it will allow you to, to actually import something into GarageBand. At the top right here, you can see a little number four under the loops. And that's where my four files are. So I'm just going to duplicate this four times, or rather duplicate it three times to get four tracks. And then have a look in my, there we go, Luma Fusion Audio 1. That was the bass. So just for ergonomics sake, I'm just going to put them so that it's the bass at the bottom and the treble at the top with the others in between. And vocal one. Mixing audio. Ooh. I've got them the wrong way around. <laughs> Undo that. I'm going to put that one up there. Vocal two, three, and four. Mixing audio. There we go, that's the top one. Now, I have a lot more control now. I've got not only control over my levels, but I can also pan each track to the left or the right. So you can create a sort of pseudo stereo from your, uh, from your tracks. Not only that, I could add reverb to each one, perhaps. Let's do that. So I'm just going to do a very quick edit so that you can hear that it's definitely GarageBand that is being used here rather than the LumaFusion um, audio. Mixing audio in LumaFusion can be done using only the app. Okay, so that's heavily compressed as well. There's quite a lot of compression there. Now I'm just going to close that down and I'm also going to get rid of the, what comes at the end. It's just after that I've finished all the vocals there. I'm just going to split that. Oh, split that and uh, get rid of the, what comes afterwards. Now you can, to a certain extent, do this on LumaFusion as well, but I want the reverb tail to continue, which is why I'm doing it this way, why I'm not just putting it into LumaFusion and editing the end off. Uh, delete, delete. So now I've got something that's eight bars long, so there's plenty of time for that reverb to die away there. Mixing audio in Now, of course, it's a little bit too compressed, actually. So rather than just say, oh, you, this is an experiment, I'm actually going to try and get something a little bit better. Mixing audio in Luma Fusion. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, all right. Now, what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to save that as well, my song too. Click and hold on it. Share, song, uncompressed. 
and then it's going to well i could share it to LumaFusion directly there we go that means that when it luma fusion comes back there'll be a a file there it'll be called my song 2 so if i was really going to be strict with this i would make sure that i rename my files because actually you can get very lost very easily so luma fusion let's have a look see what's in there my song 2.wav now all i need to do is to drag that in to my working space making sure that it lines up with what was there in the first place it's likely to because actually the files in LumaFusion are always um, uh, flattened or uh, rendered from the very beginning mixing audio in LumaFusion. so that is now the garage band file where i've been able to put reverbs and i've been able to do all of those different things can be done using only the app not only that the file keeps going until the end and there's no reverb tail there we go so Mixing i've seen naughty i heard that enough times now so that at the end that audio file is actually uh, the reverb is left at the end now helpfully on luma fusion there is something called a limiter and what that does is it enables you to bump the volume all the way up without distortion. However, that does come with its own set of problems, namely over compressing. And it sort of sounds like some radio broadcast. But if I do that, if I go into the uh, Luma Fusion page, uh, we've got the limiter at the end here. Now, if I just open that up, you are f sort of uh, faced with a, um, a, se a series of options here limiting amount 0 db pre-gain 0 db where do you start well actually the pre-gain is what actually brings the level up and then the bottom control is what keeps that level from going above a certain amount however you can make it sound really sort of squashy mixing audio in luma fusion can it also has the effect of bringing that reverb up so ideally you want to do this actually in a slightly different way now if i just go back to the beginning it's loud enough anyway you can see the audio file at the bottom gives you a good reference point as to what is going on you have a middle point which is silence and then as the audio file grows in strength it goes through the green into the yellow bands and then into the red ones right at the outside which means it's kind of at the end before distortion now there are various algorithms in place with a lot of this digital technology that prevent the thing from going into distortion now i did have a question from somebody saying why is this sounding distorted and i'm sorry to say it's probably what happened at the beginning and there's not much you can do about removing distortion if the distortion is there it means that actually it's generated extra harmonics and extra artifacts which make it sound distorted and they are essentially impossible to get rid of so it's just one of those things now at the moment we've got you can see at the beginning the audio file doesn't start until about here so if i was going to get really pernickety i might have a nice silent start mixing up. so there's absolutely no noise at the beginning because if you get any little pops and clicks it can be a bit annoying especially when you're trying to edit your video and make sure that everything comes in correctly uh, you can uh, let's have a look you can actually put in a, a fade if you want the transitions on uh, luma fusion the cross dissolve not only affects the um, picture but also the audio if you wanted to so if i come down here for example and make it a shorter transition if you do a transition and bring this down it um bring more down if you edit them they very helpfully almost sort of go back to your uh, the length of the other one if you see what i mean so it's easy to have everything there that means I've got a blank screen to start with. Mixing. So it's a bit of a cleaner start. If I was to do that here as well, if I made the fade in here, the you would hear that the audio would come in gradually. Mixing audio. So it was quieter at the beginning. I could make it a bit longer to make that effect a little bit more pronounced. Mixing audio. 
There we go. So I've sent the audio from LumaFusion audio only into GarageBand in order to mix it to bring it back. There's masses you can do. Now, there is the one app that I mentioned called Final Touch, which is a really good mastering application. Now, I'm not gonna demonstrate that here because actually I've made another video about it. I've made lots of videos about GarageBand and LumaFusion and one about Final Touch as well. And you can find those all on my channel. Thanks for watching.